Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church online worship service. We're glad you could join us for this Sunday, September 26th, the 18th Sunday of Pentecost. We are so blessed to have a wonderful cooperation and support for books for kids. We brought in $560. That means 31 students are now going to receive a book monthly because of your generous gifts. We have in the Grace Graham an ability for you to see all the bags we collected over the summer. There's a picture of them. Uh, if you want to go online and see it, it is posted there. If you are one who is a member, you will probably receive your Grace Graham in the near future. Adult Forum continues on Sunday mornings right at 9.30. We hope that you can join us for an ADD class. It's an awareness class to help you kind of know the mechanics of how it works. We continue to be blessed with the ability to support many ministries. One of those is our, crumber, our Crop Hunger Walk, and we hope that you can come and be a part of that. The website donation button will be changing in the next few weeks. Uh, a new vendor is coming it will save us hundreds of dollars each year so we're hopeful that that can be part of your life and part of your knowledge if you are one who gives a check or cash we appreciate that too um, the fees are much lower with this new vendor so that is why we're changing may we know god's grace may we know god's love for us that Jesus might say a word that sounds a little strange to us today, but Jesus wants us to stop and think about our actions and how we might hurt somebody or might keep someone away from faith by using the words we use. And I believe that it's a call for all of us to love our neighbor, no matter what the neighbor is, someone who might be very different from us, or someone who is so much like us that we are happy to share that gospel, but I pray that we share that gospel message with all people. Let us continue with our time of worship and praise. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, glory to you, O Lord. John said to Jesus, teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Friends, we hear all kinds of words being shared, and sometimes we share a really kind word. I don't know if you've ever told a friend, get lost. I don't want to ever see you again. Or if you said something like, you know, I hope that you leave forever, never to come back, or something similar. 
basically saying banishing that person away probably said in anger but a lot of these words that we hear are what we call exaggeration or hyperbole from Jesus today Jesus may literally have meant for us to cut off our hand or foot or tear out an eye because it is better to go around and do these things walk around with one eye walk around with one hand walk around with one foot if it keeps us from keeping others from knowing Jesus there's so many ways that we are stumbling blocks my friends and I pray that we can continue to know that we may never mean get lost or I never want to see you again or go away and never come back and maybe Jesus really didn't mean for us to cut off our hand or foot or pluck out our eye but Jesus always wants us to be in relationship when we say those things like I hate you never come back it's a stumbling block it's a it's a wall it's a division and Jesus doesn't want that Jesus calls us into a new life might we find that new life and share God with one another let us pray our echo prayer dear God help us always to know your love and to share it freely and let us forgive one another in Jesus name we pray amen thanks we'll see you next week teacher we saw someone casting out demons in your name and we tried to stop him because he was not following us but Jesus said do not stop him for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If it sounds like Jesus is coming down hard on the disciples, well, quite frankly, it should. We have a tendency not to like this Jesus, this Jesus who seems too mean for business, who lays down the law, so to speak, and thus we grasp onto whatever we can find to explain away Jesus' comments that are found throughout the Gospel today. And so, writing a passage like this off as just exaggeration is a convenient escape. It's easy to pass over this text, you know? It's just an embellishment. It's over-the-top rhetoric. It's just exaggeration at its finest. Jesus didn't really mean what he said, right? He didn't really mean cut off your foot or your hand or tear out your eye. For heaven's sake, get with it. And so saying that happened to come across like this in our text end up just being thrown out or not used or being denied that Jesus would ever say a thing like that. We don't know quite what to do with Jesus' words today. So we regulate them to those passages that don't really apply to our lives, at least not today. But we know the truth. This gospel text is really what at least I need to hear sometimes. To have me, basically, to have a come to Jesus moment. To get kicked in the butt and hit with reality. Furthermore, it's easy to dismiss Jesus' exaggeration here when it helps us to make sense of Scripture. 
those who choose to read the Bible literally and then as an errant and infallible are just fine to look past today's texts that Jesus talks about cutting hands off, feet off, plucking out an eye, and yet these same people insist on interpretations of passages that are far more ambiguous than today's gospel reading. But it's a slippery slope, my friends, in Christ, is it not? Jesus didn't really intend what he said. Jesus didn't really mean cut off your hand. And so therefore, did he really mean the serious part of his words to his disciples to not be a stumbling block? Hmm. Once we cast off Jesus' so-called exaggerations, once we throw them away, it's all too comfortable to reject the primary point as well of not being an obstruction, of not throwing a stumbling block, of not being the cause for someone to fall away. Overstatement becomes a distraction that can take us down a rabbit hole from which it is hard to extract ourselves. All of a sudden, we are debating the meaning of the exaggeration of Jesus' words rather than paying attention to its real purpose. We start dancing around biblical literalism, all the while ignoring that the embellishment is trying to call out that truth that is being revealed, the significance of the claim to which the overemphasis is pointing. The function of the exaggeration of cutting off your hand is to magnify what's at stake. Jesus' inflammatory words should not always be dismissed as mere enlargement. Jesus' words of cutting off your foot or tearing out your eye points to truth, a truth that must be heard and must be taken seriously. Because it's a truth we all need to hear that we could be the cause of someone tripping up someone else in their discipleship. That we could be the cause of someone stumbling in their faith. That we, I, could be the cause of someone questioning whether or not they are truly a critical and viable member of God's kingdom. And we would rather blame another or bend to safe and secure demonstrations of faith than take accountability for the ways in which we have prevented others from living into their fullness as a disciple, their fullness as a child of God, their fullness as one who is so loved by our gracious Savior. And this discomfort quickly turns into some sort of self-justification for our actions or lack thereof. We all too quickly assume that putting a stumbling block in the way of others ends up being but a mere misstep in their lives. No big deal. They will quickly, we think, get back upon their feet. It's a fairly unremarkable, rather unnoticeable trip along the way, which doesn't lead to a lifelong direction of hardship. Right? Sure. Go ahead. Let's convince ourselves of that. And yet, if we are honest, we know that tripping over something even a little stumble can lead to a major fall, a fall from which it takes a very long time to recuperate, if ever. And I think all of us have witnessed that type of fall. But Jesus, well, Jesus' words point to what is at stake in being the cause of a stumble in faith. It's not just 
about standing in another's way of faith, but denying their individual expression of faith. It's not just that we have somehow prevented someone from having faith, but have prevented a life of faith that they and only they can embody. Because by standing in someone's way to a relationship with Jesus, we have somewhere along the line towed the line, insisting on certain acceptable and so-called valid expressions of faith. Hold your hands when you pray. Have you ever heard that? I have. Don't look up and around while you're praying. Uh, I was taught as a seminarian to open my hands and look up with eyes open. There are many ways. I am writing this sermon late this week for a number of reasons, but maybe mostly because I was supposed to. I am writing on a Wednesday night after being interviewed about my dad's health. My dad has had a lot of experience in what it feels like to have stumbling blocks placed in his way toward living a healthy life and sometimes even a faithful life of what God and who God has called him to be. He has felt the pain that many people experience. This experience is a shared experience by many people, even at Grace Church. I have witnessed many have shared a space where there are stumbling blocks, obstructions that keep on coming, even though we have, as a church, supposedly made strides in the church toward the acceptance and the commitment to all women, men, and children. White, black, brown, Asian, straight, and gay people, all people in the church. We know all too well how our attempts at telling the truth are often dismissed as exaggeration. Sexual harassment? Isn't that kind of an overstatement you're making? Angry white male syndrome? It was just a few comments here and there. You shouldn't really be mad about that. They really didn't mean anything. Claiming sexual harassment is a little over the top, don't you think? Hearing a racial slur, well, it could have been that bad, not at all. Otherwise, you should have notified the authorities. Come on, rejection, really? It isn't that bad. That's a bit of exaggeration. That wasn't a slur. Today, Jesus uses hyperbole. Jesus uses exaggeration so that we can wake up and hear what our actions actually do. Jesus' words are being spoken so we can stop and listen so that we can stop putting stumbling blocks up so that others can actually have a chance to believe. When we place stumbling blocks in the paths of those trying to answer God's call, as they and only they can hear it and live it, we are effectively silencing them. Today, we hear Jesus say, No. Today we hear Jesus say, do not stop them, for whoever is not against us is for us. That's what is at stake, sharing the gospel with all people and sharing it in a many, a multitude, diverse way. Let us do so. Let us share Jesus. Let us share the God of our salvation, the God that comes to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.